Part 2. Verdant Wind. Garland Moon. The Chaos of War. Some title. Claude's plan to call in all Myron forces succeeds, and the Alliance army captures Fort Mercius. Before they can celebrate their victory, javelins of light rain down from the sky and destroy the fort. Forced to temporarily evacuate, the Alliance army regroups at Garrig Mach until it is ready to march on Enbar, the Imperial capital. I love how the sun was hiding in behind the clouds. He's like, Hur. and then that like red angel was <laughs> just blowing at him. It's funky pictures. Eh, well, we do start wars. Nah, see, that's the that's it's the type of thing Claude wants to change. Capital. He wants to eliminate that. We still don't know where Rhea is, but if she's alive, she's likely in Enbar. Hopefully, we manage to find her without too much trouble. Give everybody a chance. All this generalization shit. We need to save her quickly. I wonder if she's alive. Oh. If the Empire has some reason to keep Rhea alive, then she's alive. I'm sure you must be anxious to see her again. <laughs> what the hell's the point? I understand. You need to see Rhea again so you can figure out who you really are. But we're going up against Edelgard here. It won't be so simple. <sighs> Our next stop is the Imperial Capital. We've sure come a long way. What are you talking about? This is Garrig Mach. It's where we started. I didn't mean literally, Raphael. I was speaking symbolically. My earnest desire to protect the Alliance has carried me this far. It will not fail me. I am sure the rest of you all have your own reasons to fight as well. Of course, I understand that the fight will not end until we defeat the Empire. And now the time has arrived at long last to march on the Imperial capital and defeat the Emperor. It really gets you thinking, doesn't it? We all come from different places and have different goals and dreams. But thanks to those two, we were all able to come together and overcome all sorts of challenges. You are referring to Claude and the Professor, I assume. Even within our own odd group, those two are particularly unusual. Oh, so you are aware that you're odd. Well, that's... It was simply a figure of speech. I am speaking about Claude and the Professor right now. They're like the wind and the trees. Huh? Claude and the Professor are? What does that even mean? And who is which? Oh, um... I was just thinking that if we're the birds, then those two are like the trees and the wind. The Professor is a great tree that kindly embraces us and watches over us as we perch on its branches. And Claude is like the wind, pushing us forward as we soar across the open sky. Thank you, Marianne. Hmm. The metaphor about the Professor is solid, but I think Claude just blows us around on a whim. Still, we owe him a lot. I think that's beautiful, Marianne. I can really picture it. When this war is over, I'd love to paint a picture of those two. Just get, oh, and of all the just people ask her out already. Well. You mean like a historical painting? I like that. Maybe our descendants will look at it a long, long time from now. I must say, that piques my interest. I look forward to seeing how you portray my valiant efforts. Make him... When you put it that way, we may be witnessing one of the greatest events in Fodland's history. It's a lot of pressure, but the sense of duty I feel is even stronger than the fear. I'm just happy to be here with all of you. I won't get scared, no matter what we face. We have our goal. Enbar, the Imperial Capital. Let's get to work. Oh. Oh shit. I share the same birthday as Lawrence? That's depressing. A 
stay inside my room. At last I feel as free as a bird that's flown. Bernadetta, do you have a moment? <laughs> I wasn't looking at their hats, I swear! And if I was, I wouldn't say a word about them. Not even if you tortured me. Mercy, please! I can keep a secret honest! Uh, hold on! It's me, Aloise. Calm down. Huh? Oh, Aloise! I was sure you... um, never mind. Hmm. I can't help but wonder about these hats you were looking at. What? But I'll set that aside for now. I wanted to apologize for being insensitive. I can't believe I trampled on your emotions like that. Huh? Was there something you did? I don't remember anything. About your dear uncle. It never crossed my mind that he might have passed away. Oh, that. Don't worry about it. But it clearly upset you. I can't even express how guilty I feel about opening an old wound like that. I'm so sorry. Aww. Hey, it's okay. You're reminding me of him even now. And it's completely fine. I'm glad we talked about it. Is that so? Hmm. Well then, why did you look so sad when I mentioned him? The truth is, I realized I hadn't visited my uncle's grave in a long time. With me not showing up for so long, I imagined him being worried about me. I see. He must have been quite dear to you. What a wholesome son of a bitch she is. Oh, she gives you flowers for Gerald. Hey, that gives me a great idea. Why don't we go see my uncle together sometime? You want me to visit your uncle's grave? But I don't have any connection with him. Sure you do. You're connected by me. I didn't think of that. All right, then. I accept. If you don't mind my tagging along, I'll gladly accompany you. No puns? Great. Thanks, Uncle... Uh, <laughs> thanks, Aloise. <laughs> yeah, I am. Problem? Jealous? Training. Who's there? Oh. I'll kill you. Hey, Ignatz. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Relax. You're not interrupting. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were training out here. I sometimes come here to practice by myself. It's more like a real battlefield, you know? Shooting the targets in the yard lets you train your aim and all, but the tension just isn't the same. Hell yeah. Summer's great. You're right. A real battlefield feels quite different. But if that's the atmosphere you want, I feel even more like I'm intruding. Oh, knock it off. You're already here. May as well stick around while I catch my breath. Ah, okay, sorry. Thank you. Sorry to bother you. Ah, oh, you're still way too nice. You know you've said you're sorry about a dozen times Ex since you got here. Exactly! Oh, so ah. <laughs> it's fine. I guess it's part of your charm. Hey, what's that bundle of papers? Oh, did you come here to paint? I remember now. Someone said you're a great artist. You paint a lot, right? Uh, yes. Yes. When I have the time, that is. I enjoy painting. It helps me relax. Oh, well, that could be your thing. He's like a young me. <laughs> My thing? Last time we talked about it, you said you didn't have a thing you were really amazing at. But if you like painting so much, it must be a skill you're looking to master. M my paintings are nothing but a hobby. Besides, I'm not that good. I never took art lessons. <laughs> La lots of artists are art self-taught. When, when I was little, I drew a picture for it a young girl. It makes sense, actually. The picture made her so happy that I decided to keep at it. That's how it started. So you're practicing your art to make other people happy? Is that it? Oh no, th that's an overstatement. I must insist, again, it's just a hobby. Even if I were to become a master artist, it wouldn't be a useful skill. Aren't you from a merchant family employed by the nobles? I think it would be really useful there. I'm not inheriting the business. My brother is. My father said that I'm to become a knight. So my art won't do anyone any good. At all. 
ever. <laughs> Depressing. Oh, Ignatz. <laughs> it's gonna end there. Flame. Here to pester me, brother? <laughs> no. I think I'm the one who ought to be pestered. Regardless of what I say to you, it is not as though it has any effect in reducing your worry over me. That is true. No matter where you are, and no matter what you're doing, I will always worry. But that's only because I treasure you so very much. Please understand, I'm not trying to hurt you. Of that I am well aware. I am touched that you care so deeply. When I think of it, it is my own fault that you have become so overprotective. I cannot blame you. Yeah, be stronger. No, the fault is entirely mine. Oh my god. You were still so young. I placed far too much strain on you, and our lack of resources was no excuse. Worse, I failed to watch you during the battle. Your mother, too. We... lost her because of me. Afterward, it broke my heart to see how much you would need to rest just to survive. I swore that I would dedicate every moment remaining in my life to your protection. Oh shit. I never thought of it that way. Ever since then, I have been afraid of falling asleep. My fear of sleeping is outmatched only by my fear of spending my life alone. Even if it cannot last, I want to live among my peers as one of them, as an ordinary person. Similar to how you and mother coexisted with your own comrades back then, fighting side by side. Quite right. I know you must leave the nest someday. No matter how many ages our lives may span, I know that's the way of it. Father. Don't. Nobody is listening, Father. Let me address you as such just this once. I have valued the quiet days you and I have spent alone together, but I am no longer a child. Just as you and mother met one another, and eventually I was brought into the world, I... I know. Please, no more. No matter what happens, you are my daughter. It gives me great joy to see you grow. But please, at least until this war is over, let me continue to worry. You're the most precious person in my life. I can't bear the thought of losing you. It seems I have no choice in the matter. I shall allow you to worry about me enough for yourself and mother both. But only that much and no more, my dear Father Keyhole. Thank you, Sethleen. There it is. With you. No. No. I heard that you've been telling people not to worry so much about my condition. It's not a condition, it's a... I didn't put it like that. Is that a fact? Uh, maybe. <laughs> no need to be coy. Thanks for doing that. But I do have one minor concern. You said that I have inside in five years? <laughs> what the heck is that about? Everyone's calling me half decade happy now. <laughs> happy. That's a stupid ass name. First of all, terrible nickname. <laughs> Second of all, you weren't even here. Did you just make that up? <laughs> you weren't there. <laughs> Maybe. Seriously? You think that's okay? It's so frustrating. I'm fighting the urge to sigh right now. Why is this? Why is this? Why is the game playing f f romantic music at a time like this? Well, the nickname's bogus. I have absolutely sighed in the last five years. I wouldn't believe what a hassle it was. Monsters rampaging willy nilly through abyss. Thanks to some help from the people underground, no one got hurt. But it was a close call. Maybe if you had been there, it wouldn't have been so much trouble. Yes, you. You've got the sword of the creator. 
That thing can chop through monsters like nothing. Are you fishing for compliments now? Fine, you're a good leader. You watch out for all of us. Even when the rest of the world turns and hides from me, I know you've got my back. You make me feel safe. Like I can be myself. Like I don't have to worry so much about keeping my emotions in check. I felt pretty sad all that time you were gone. I could have left Garrick mock altogether. But then I started thinking, you might still be alive after all. So I went looking for you. Back to where you'd fallen and all. Forget I said anything. Look at me getting all mushy and sincere. How embarrassing. Let's just go back to earlier when I was giving you a hard time. Hey, I can feel embarrassed if I want to. I can feel however I want to feel. Whoa. Did I really just say that? You're losing your composure I there. Think that's enough vulnerability for one day. I'll see you around. <laughs> Unexpected. I'm not crying. <laughs> An I don't have many good memories of her, if I'm being honest, but she's dearer to me than my father. If you happen to see her, please make sure she's not caught up in all the fighting. She's only a civil servant, so hopefully she takes a cue from her Bernie and stays inside. Well, if we can win this war, then Claude will be the king of Fodlan, and... Maybe he'll tear down the wall that separates Fodlan from the outside world. I know it's hard to imagine, but I really hope he does. It would be so much better if people could live together instead of apart. I might even be able to live an ordinary life in the world Claude envisions. Well then. Look at her be a go-getter. No. That Nardell guy, or Nadir, I suppose. It was all some trick, and we fell for it. <laughs> I don't think the nickname The Undefeated applies if he flees from us. Though, maybe he only got that name by running away. Can't be defeated if you run off, right? I don't know. She was chopping up people left and right. In the opera, actors came and went all the time. But the people behind the scenes would stay forever. I'll bet I'd know a few of them now, even after all these years. They've probably left the capital by now. Although, I'm still worried about them. Harvest, 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 harvest. I just do random. <laughs> I always just do random. All right, bye. Hey. Huh? Just recently, the fish in the pond suddenly started thrashing around like mad. I didn't know what was going on. And then I saw something gleaming in the southeast. It happened right when you were out on campaign. I wonder what it could have been. Oh. We're heading up to Embar next. I hope I make it back safe so I can tell my little sis about it. I hear they got a neat opera house there, where Manuela used to perform. What was it called again? Middle Frank. Haha, <laughs> that's the one. My little sis always goes on about how much she'd like to see him perform. I know we can't see a show, but do you think we could at least see the building? Can't make any promises.
Wait, Balthus is here? Where? I missed them. Oh, psh. I dare the undefeated. With a name like that, he's bound to put up a damn good fight. Did you get a good look at Judith? She practically had hearts floating out of her eyeballs when she looked at the dare. <laughs> Hell yeah. You saw it too? <laughs> I know that look well. She's got it bad. Honestly, they'd make a cute couple. Good. It makes all the sense. Even seasoned warriors aren't immune to love, pal. Yeah, but if it's a one-track mine on that ship, Balthus. <laughs> Alright, it's not the worst. He's not a one-track mine. It's close to it, though. Oh, Claude, you're here. My friend, the reinforcements the Lord sent are finally gathering. Truth be told, Fort Mercius would have made for a better base of operation. But that weird pillar of light changes things. It's pretty scary, honestly. I wonder what it is. Pillar of light. Rage from the goddess. Some magic. Natural phenomenon. Well, that is how the legend goes in Aelel. If it really was the rage of the goddess, let's do our best not to enrage her even further. Well, I guess pondering it is a waste of energy for now. Let's just get ready to move out. The capital is Edelgard's domain, so she has the advantage. It's going to be a tough battle. Yeah, that last fight was actually... <laughs> Honestly, that fight was quick. Quick, kind of. Definitely, it could have been longer. Invading the capital and smashing the empire. I wonder if doing so could really end this war. Care to share your thoughts, Professor? You say that with such confidence. I want to believe that it's true. Although for now, better to focus my efforts on the fight at hand. We're about to put the finishing touches on this war. I wonder how Fodlin will look without the backdrop of death and destruction. I can't wait to see it. On the other hand, I'm terrified of what the future might hold. Who knows if I'll survive the assault on the capital? Finishing touches? He thinks of it like a painting. You interesting man, Ignatz. Ignatz. Ten years ago, Dagda and Bridget attacked the Empire from the west. Their final target was the capital, but they were countered at a port town long before they reached their destination. I guess our attempt has been more successful than theirs, all things considered. It looks like we're nearing the end of this struggle. I'm sure Lady Rhea is on tenterhooks waiting for me to swoop in and rescue her. Oof, you don't mince your words. Try being a bit more mindful of other people's feelings. <laughs> Lady Rhea's not waiting for me, I know. No matter how much I might wish she were. She's waiting for you. I don't want to fight you anyways. Would not want to fight you. I need to be speaking. Five years ago, Edelgard said a thing to me. Bridget is a vassal of the Empire. But she also said I always have the freedom to be choosing whether I am with or not with her. Wow. I will become the ruler of Bridget. So she said I must make my own path. So now, my path and her path will be colliding. The Death Knight is no ordinary knight. I will prey upon him. I will quench my blade's thirst with his blood. <laughs> his focus is on fighting you, I'm sure. But mine will be the last face he sees. Yeah, you give it some good, Felix. You fucking... I'll give you the fucking honor.
I mean, he called dibs, so I mean, I'm not gonna deny him the luxury. Please. Yes. Really. Mm. I was taught from a young age to believe that the creed of Seros was just the way of the world. To question it never even occurred to me. But Claude and Edelgard are different. They challenge the common wisdom, even defy it. Common wisdom, more like conventional wisdom, which I always used to say is always wrong. It is Mostly always wrong. to discard familiar assumptions, but that is an essential quality of the visionary. Indeed, true greatness must lie beyond common sense. Hmm, <laughs> that's good. I should write that down. I think he's changing as a person too. I think he's starting to see the nobility thing be kind of like... Come to think of it. I wouldn't say a hoax, but like, I'm starting to think he's starting to notice it. The whole of the capital is going to be a battleground. The city has such a long heritage. Even so, perhaps it deserves to be reduced to ashes for once. Good, I thought you were going to talk about depressing shit. Like Linhart again. Like how you talked about Ferdinand and how we killed him. But we can't let the common folk get hurt. We should try to confine the damage to the noble section of town. Man, why, why is she here? Hey. We're finally going to the capital. This will be my chance to avenge Captain Gerald. She's been holding this in for five years. Once we smash the Empire, I'm sure his soul will finally be able to rest in peace. Monica killed Captain Gerald for the Flame Emperor, and the Flame Emperor was Edelgard. I know that the future of all Fodlan rests on this battle. Nothing else is more important. But for me, this is personal. For Captain Gerald's sake, I'm going to give it all I've got and more. Rail will be somewhere in the city. I wonder if she can sense us coming. If we are able to save her, then I expect you will learn many secrets that have hitherto been kept from you. Are you prepared for that? Can you tell me? That is unfortunate. Well, you must become ready. The battle will soon be upon us. Let us both be at our best for what is to come. I'm not ready. I'm not ready! <laughs> Screaming like a baby. Enbar's streets are paved with unhappy memories, Professor. I've avoided the damned place ever since I abandoned my nobility. Swore never to return. Now, here we are. To return in this manner. Well, I can't say it is something I ever imagined. What do you want it over there, Hanneman? It's very likely that Lady Rhea is confined in the Imperial Palace. If so, then our strategy will be to gain control of the streets and then assault the castle. A street battle followed by a castle invasion. It's just one battle after another. It'll be tough, but we have to win for Lady Rhea. I was born in Enbar. My mother and father met in a church there. Not too long after, I was brought into the world. I do not understand how war can happen in such a precious place. It is most regrettable. Yeah. <laughs> fighting in the capital? Ugh. And we're fighting against Edelgard. Double ugh. But with you leading us, Professor, I know we'll win. Oh, we got her riled up. I'm a little scared, to be honest. I'm just shouting to relieve the tension, but I'll be fine. That's why you're up here. No, I don't blame you. <laughs> They're all nervous. Professor! Here we are, facing the final battle with the Empire. It's been a long, difficult struggle. We have to get Lady Rhea back, and we have to crush the Empire in the name of Captain Geralt. 
I don't know what comes next, but we can sort out those details later. Crush the Empire. Once this battle is over, what will become of Fargus and Fodlan? My hope is for a world at peace. A world in which this present turmoil is a thing of the past. A stuff of legends. I believe those who survive the atrocities of war have a duty to create a new, better world. So the sooner we can stamp out such turmoil, the better. We must win, Professor. There is no alternative here. I won't allow for anything else. Oh? No alternative, you say? What if I just stop playing the game, huh? Huh? What if I just uninstalled? Huh? Huh? Ever thought about that, huh? Uninstall? Professor, what does that mean? Uninstall? Of course the Alliance is making sure that the five great lords help with the effort. But we'll be getting support from the smaller territories too. I'll bet this is the first time those territories have worked so closely together. At least since the founding of the Alliance. Bod's quite the idealist, isn't he? Not that I've got room to talk. You're both... Tr tr freaking tricky people. His ambitions are lofty and... Well, reckless. One false move, and Fodlin is done for. Although... Unrelenting idealism with a dash of recklessness can change the world. At least you get it. Listen up. I don't know much about Almirans, but I guess I have something in common with them. We are viewed as different because of where we came from. There must be a lot of people like us. And that's what I thought. People from the north, the west, and even some isolated communities within Fodland. And if that's the case, maybe Clodster's got the right idea. Ah, oh, she calls him Clodster. Destroying the walls that separate Fodlin from the outside world strikes me as a bold step. I've spent so long struggling to reclaim the past that Claude's vision of the future casts me in a poor light. Oh, did you think I was serious? <laughs> as if I would ever admit to a fault. Ensuring that the tradition of House Nouvelle continues uninterrupted is a noble task. Oh shit, that's right. She just admitted it right there. Oh. What's gonna become of her? She won't get her house back! This- uh Oh shit. Nah, I might as well. Fuck it. I should do more tea times. I think I've been slacking on tea times anyways. What did she like? I don't remember. Lester Cortania. Tea of the Saints. Probably the sweet apple. Though. I needn't stand on ceremony. You may call for me whenever you like. The cunning to have my favorite tea brewed and ready speaks well of you. <laughs> Wait a minute. She's actually. Wasn't she always have? Wasn't I always having tea time with her? Like in the Sunday, in the sunlight, during the day. You have my gratitude. Guess we're in a room. Things are more personal. <laughs> personal tea time. Yes. Oh, if I fuck this up. Well. Shareable snacks? I don't share my snacks, I'm sorry. Nah, I'm just kidding, I do. You only get one bite though. Oh? One bite! Everybody knows the rules. You're a cat person? Uh, uh, yeah. Why not? That's fine, I guess. Yes. I don't hate cats. Just Too hot. more of a dog person. Likeable allies, monastery mysteries working together. Yeah. 
Working together, yeah. Ever since that fateful day when the Dagden army took House Nouvelle's territory, I've been on my own. Oh, don't bring that up. That's depressing. That's not- Why would you bring that up? You killed the mood. Yes, precisely. Yeah, I disagree. You were not- You're not by yourself. You're not alone. Disagree. Here, have something a history. Wait, what the hell would she want? I mean, it's not her birthday, so it's not a birthday tea time. Let me take a painting. Why, how thoughtful of you! Oh no, you're, you're <laughs> her. Her motivation's maxed out. I better not give her anything else. You, that's all you get for today. Yes. <gasps> She's blushing. It frustrates me sometimes when the words I hear myself say. Sound nothing like me. That's a strange thing to think about. <laughs> that is a strange thing to think about. How delicious. I didn't say step. Your gaze seems fixed upon me. What are you playing at? <laughs> Uh, I think that's it. Oh? Yeah, this was fun. Uh, we'll just talk about dogs more, you know? I could grow accustomed to this. And that wouldn't be such a bad thing, would it? Not at all. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the left. Urgh. There's still quite a bit of support. It's a good thing I kind of like didn't do all them all at once. I'll, I'll probably continue these tomorrow. Yeah, it's one o'clock. Yeah, I'll probably continue them tomorrow. Or er, tomorrow is Monday. Yeah, I stream tomorrow. Yeah, I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, what do I stream tomorrow? And then we invade the capital, and then end it, end it, end it, end it, and it's all over. But I'm gonna end it there. See you later. See you later, guys. I'm going to bed.